Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are in the world today. Welcome to our step guide monthly gathering. My name is Herb and I'm an alcoholic. Please join me. You can pray out loud, you're on mute, or at least you're intended to be on mute. And, uh, or you could pray silently, or you don't have to pray at all. As I mentioned prior to the workshop starting, I have no rules. I have adopted the culture of the 12 step fellowship. No rules, none, zero rules. We have many suggestions. Be intentional in the use of these words, God. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Please join me in the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that cannot change. I cannot change. Courage to, Courage change. to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. And as you know, this is a monthly gathering. And if you don't know it, <laughs> that's what we do on the first Monday, usually of every month. I think September might be a, an exception there if it's Labor Day. But you'll be notified of that in advance. The first Monday is a gathering of people internationally who are interested in helping other people getting some help because they're actually doing that right now and sharing their experience and or their questions with the journey of helping other people. They're actually active as step guides and or sponsors. It's a broad net step guide and or sponsors. And there's no qualification other than your desire to be helpful. And, and if you're not active, actually as a step guide or sponsor, and you think you might want to, it's kind of like in your, in your prayer and in your sort of intuition about your invitation to, then you're welcome also here to listen to other people's experience and or questions and to ask your own questions and and share anything that you would like about your own journey and your perception of your invitation. Not everybody is called to be a step guide or sponsor. I'm very clear on that. Each person has their own competencies. We are each as human being called to help someone, but in our own defined, almost DNA specific as a, uh, our experience and our knowledge and our competencies invite us to help, to contribute to the quality of the world that we live in. So if you have questions and or comments, concerns, experiences, this is the place. And um, I have no rules, just for those of you who are not that familiar with me, I have no rules. I adopt the culture and the spirit of the culture of the 12-step fellowship. Um, I, we do have purpose here, and I will keep you focused on the purpose so that this is not a general meeting to solve your personal issues or to discuss your personal issues or even to discuss the specific step unless it connects to helping other people. I'm an alcoholic. I'm working with Joe. I'm her admin for her uh, women's 12 step workshop. And uh, thanks for your program, Secondhand, regurgitated by a fabulous Australian. Mm -hmm. I, um, she's, she's a special gift. Yeah. 
seriously, with her help and her sponsorship advice as well, I've been able to, I have three sponsees right now. Uh, two are in OA, so I'm a step guide. And I just recently got a new sponsee who is in uh, my program, AA. And so my, I have a couple questions for both groups, but um, I'm pretty clear on doing the step guide at this point. I've been doing it almost a year with these two ladies and I've had a couple others come and go for good reasons and whatnot. Um, is there anything else you'd recommend as a, 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 a sponsor to do in addition to just going through the program that you do with everyone? Well, what do you consider to be the role of the sponsor? Right. She, I guess I am uh, her do you have a sponsor? Bounding board? Wait, 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 wait. Do you have a sponsor? Yes. All right. And what is your expectation from your, what is your expectation of your sponsor for you? Me, yeah, I'm at this point, um, really just a sounding board. Uh, she listened to my fifth step when I went through the program, yep. this program last year. Yep. Um, other than that, um, not much really. Okay, all right. But I'm so eight it, years. I'm eight years in. Too. Yep. But it, it, it's very tailored. It's an excellent foundational question. So thank you for bringing it up right at the beginning of our conversation here, um, and it's really uh, tailored to each person. Now, I recommend people read chapter seven, working with others from the big book as a primer and foundation for a blueprint to sponsorship. It doesn't say that, of course, but I do believe that's its intent uh, to search for somebody who needs help, number one, very proactive. And if in fact somebody connects and wants help, then you give them the help. Yes, I think the primary purpose of sponsorship is to take people through the steps. But there are people who are uncomfortable doing that because they haven't either done it themselves or for other reasons, they're not comfortable in being responsible for com communicating that message of the steps. I make no judgment about that because I know lots of people who aren't sponsors who are contributing to the community around them, whether that's the fellowship or even outside of that. And really, I believe that's the broadest spiritual principle of step 12 is that we bring usefulness and helpfulness to the community around us. Um, I believe the letter of step 12 would in fact recommend that we stay within our fellowship, singleness of purpose and help people that way. All right. Having said that, there's a, uh, brochure in the general service office on sponsorship. It's a one of those little thin ones and it's got some wonderful suggestions, very high level, very general from their experience. But if you really want to read a book on sponsorship, there's one published by Hazelton called 12 Step Sponsorship by Hamilton B. Hamilton B. I've read it three times over the last 30 years, uh, probably each time before I do a workshop on sponsorship, uh, because I think it's, it's the best material I've come across, not official, but it's the best experiential articulation of what a sponsor is. And it also has a section on how to be a sponsee. So I, I really like the book itself. Thank you. Um, having said that, of course, I just indicated that I've done at least one workshop that's recorded and it's on YouTube on sponsorship. It's a three, I think it's a three hour uh, workshop, which might be quite helpful in terms of unpacking all of the things that you and I have just talked about. Uh, I, I think the primary role of a sponsor is a step guide. And the secondary role is an accountability partner, as you indicated. 
I, I, need, I need a companion on the path. Now, in the beginning, my sponsor, this is 37 years ago, my sponsor said, call me every day, which I did. All right. Now, I don't call my sponsor except to make an appointment to visit with him once a month. And when we do get together, I'm not sure who's sponsoring who, but be that as it may, <laughs> we have a wonderful conversation. And every once in a while, I'll, I'll use him as a sounding board for something I'm dealing with. Normally, it's about family and or some personal things. My, my sponsor happens to be a uh, international interventionist. So he's got some broad information about dealing with people in the early stages. Does that all help? It does, it does. And I will um, look at the books. Yeah, I think you'd uh, find it quite helpful actually. And you know what I've noticed her and I appreciate very specific information. You know, I, I was a project manager for decades and I, uh, what Joe really helped me with was setting yep. boundaries for yep. people, yep. which you've talked about here quite a bit. And yep. if they don't make an appointment, what do I do? You know, what do I say? I need words, you know? So yep. I think I'm confident in leading her through the step. She's very willing. I'm so grateful for the program she's in because it really takes care of a lot of the disciplinary stuff that I wouldn't feel comfortable <laughs> doing anyway. Right. Um, someone suggested, and here's a good one. Uh, ask your higher power <laughs> yeah. in the moment, right. you know, really take a moment and pause and be that example of the pause. And what's my motive? Am I saying this? Why am I saying this to yeah. fix or to uh, ask a lot of questions? That was a good thing that was in here. Ask a lot of questions. Right. So, um, okay. So thank you for that. Another quickie. And this oh, is for all three of these. That, before you leave that, that prompted me to, make sure that we understand our role is um, we stand on the path pointing the way to the light. All right. We don't push them. We don't drag them. Right. All right. They either want it or they don't. We're, now, obviously, we use positive language and we're confirming and affirming, but they got to want the water and they need to drink it themselves. The man who took me through the steps that says, I will work as hard as you do, but I won't work any harder. Yeah. No, you yeah, and that's a huge gift that yeah. I got from you and from and from Joe was it's not my program. Oh, because their program. Many, yeah, because I that's I'm codependent ish. So and many I, people, I definitely want to fix it. I don't mean to be, yeah, many people are, and um, <clears throat> they need to be aware of that inclination and to shape it so that it's healthy. Uh, there's nothing essentially wrong with caring about other people as long as we're able to manage that energy rather than having that energy manage us. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other big challenge I've come across is um, the, the other two women who are in OA are the self-loathing, um, uh, self-deprecating, just constant and super high energy. Um, I'm a pretty relaxed, calm person just by nature. And um, any suggestions you have or words that you would suggest to get them to kind of calm down and stop uh, being so hard on themselves? Uh, well, it depends it's gotten on better you over time, time, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think that those are interesting words that you might raise as visible sort of... Uh, mm, billboards for them <laughs> but get them through the steps i mean if that's the if that's what they're asking you to do then keep them focused on the step redirect yeah really because you're not going to help them by selling them or even reminding them it's kind of like yeah 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 
but this this loathing this self-deprecating is at the cellular level and there's lots of reasons for it but the only solution that i found of course therapy is important at some point for lots of people not everybody but lots of people but the step work prepares you for the healing that comes from therapy or good religion or a good relationship the step work was essential for me to begin the thawing out process that then allowed me to address or, or have it addressed, even though I didn't even actually quite know it, uh, this whatever it was at the cellular level that needed to be healed. Got it. Yeah. So redirect and... Um... Through the steps. And keep them focused yes. on the steps. Yes. When and I, have, I use humor. I use humor a little because that, that kind of breaks the It might. It, might it, lightens it, it lightens it up. It lightens it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, especially uh, self-deprecating self humor that's not uh, modeling for them some other kind of uh, uh, negative behavior, but is kind of like yeah. reflecting a level of humility and... Uh, and um, that we're not perfect. Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of that self-deprecating comes from some delusion that they need to be perfect. And they're using this measuring stick, which they never measure up to. Yeah. They're both in step four right now too, which I know. Oh, that's, that's it. Has... Yeah. Yeah. Allow them to suffer. <laughs> All right. Are you a nurse? Okay. No. <laughs> no. All right. no. So, and I, I just remind them of that gently and try to be in a lighthearted way that this is kind of what how it works. Well, I use the, the term. Tears. I use the term soul surgery. Oh, that's right. That's a good one. Right. And surgery is about cutting. It's about removal. It's about pain. And yes, but keep in mind the hope for outcome is the healing and the minimization of pain. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thanks for being here. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Wonderful question. My question is around boundaries. I'm, I'm not sure if actually the question's been answered. In terms of um, I'm doing, I, for the last year now, I've been doing step guiding and it's, it's a fantastic experience yeah. um, and uh, taking them through the steps is really um, helping me really understand yeah. the steps myself. Oh, yes. um, now, the one thing I have probably, I think I have four right now and one is um is kind of challenging me <laughs> it almost feels like a um uh, a kind of a student teacher relationship that i'm i'm not trying to encourage but uh the challenge is she's now telling me what she's doing in her other aspects of her life uh and so i'm listening and i'm i'm trying to be where she's at is, um, is she asking you to be your sponsor? No, um, she's just talking about, well, what she shared recently was that she was sponsoring someone else. And I know she's in the FA program. And I asked her, are you abstinent? And she says, no. And I said, well, are you, uh, you know, talking to this other person as though uh, you are abstinent and she said yes and I thought and I so I'm trying to figure out what my boundaries are in terms of um what's your role with her well I'm her step she asked me to be her step guide so we're doing the steps so why are you asking about abstinence because she told me this story and I'm trying to figure out whether I should say to her you know, challenge her on the basis of her honesty or her dishonesty. Um, okay, um, I, I, don't, I don't see that as the abstinence. I don't see that as relevant to step work. Okay, so I should just leave it alone and just... Not a sponsor. That's why I asked that question. Yeah, but she... Um, 
I, she's treating me like I am her sponsor. Oh, well, she's, then you need to get clarity. Me. You need, I mean, you're welcome to take her on as a sponsor. Are you in her fellowship? Uh, I'm not really in any fellowship except this, if you can call this a fellowship. Well, then you're not qualified to be her sponsor. Yeah. So. No, no, no. You have to hear this. No, I'm hearing it. A sponsor it. is a person in the same fellowship. Okay. That's, that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At least this is the way I develop my sort of guidelines. Right. But if she wants me to continue being her, her step, step guide. guide. Yeah. So the, so essentially the demarcation point is whatever she does in her other fellowship is out of bound. It's none of your business. For me. I just it's focus just, on the step. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's very important to know why you've been hired. <laughs> what's your job description right step yeah ready. that's all i'm wanting to do is yeah step ready. yeah my yeah. job description is to take her through the steps her sobriety and her abstinence are none of my business okay great thank you yeah because right. if in fact she gets through the steps mm -hmm. <laughs> she will figure all of that out herself yeah and and you could encourage her to have a sponsor in her particular fellowship Okay. That, I mean, you can encourage. Yeah. Again, I don't have any rules about that. I strongly, and you know that I do, strongly suggest that people have a sponsor in their fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I did some sponsoring of a couple of people uh, a dozen years ago. I have, uh, in the past uh, several months, uh, resumed sponsoring. My question uh, is about a sponsee who seems uncommitted. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking for guidelines as to uh, when, if, if ever, I might fire him, say that I can no longer work with him. I've read, working with others in the big book, says, uh, we find it a waste of time to keep chasing a man who cannot or will not work with you. Right. You're sure to find someone desperate enough to accept with eagerness what you have, what you offer. Um, this Sponsee, uh, misses calls, uh, misses scheduled calls, uh, and is not doing uh, the uh, work that he agrees to do sure. between calls. So he seems uncommitted uh, and either unwilling or unable to do the work. On the other hand, if it were, if I were in his, his situation, I would want somebody to hang with me as long as it took for me to get with the program. Well, um, yeah. And and not be fired. Right. Uh, so I. Well, it's I look to you for advice. No, it's a classic question, and there's probably no right answer. I've uh, confronted it, meaning I've taken it to prayer and and meditation as well as talking to other people about it. I have my approach. I have also very experienced and credible people who disagree with my approach. <laughs> so here's my approach. I have never fired anybody. They fire themselves. However, I do ask them to do step work as a sponsor. That's my primary responsibility. And if they're not doing the step work, when they call me, to talk about their job problems or their relationship problems, 
I'll listen for, usually I'll listen for one or two minutes, and then I will ask them about the step work. And I'll say, the only thing that's going to solve your life's problems are, is the step work. So call me when you've made some progress and I hang up on them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it shortens the conversation. <laughs> now, if they don't call me, that's their problem, not mine. Every once in a while, if they've had some consistency in calling and they don't call me for um, a month, I would let a month go by. I will call them once. I might even call them twice that second month to just open it up and to see if I could break the ice or the lock that they have in terms of not. Because once they stop calling me, then the distance becomes more more of a barrier and they're reluctant to call because they're embarrassed. So when I call, it sort of breaks the log jam and uh, many times they will begin calling at that point. <clears throat> but some people, oh, I would say 40, maybe 50% of the people, they just go away. They just go away. Now, a very credible long time guy and I were doing a panel together and he said, Herb, you're doing them a disservice because they're under the delusion that they have a sponsor, even though they're not doing anything with you. They think they're okay because they have a sponsor, um, even though they're not talking to you or doing anything that you suggest, so that you're leaving them in the delusion. It's better to terminate the relationship because maybe they can find somebody that they would connect with and that they would work with. I heard it. I understand the spirit of that. But my conclusion in prayer is that if God sends them, I don't send them away. A concrete example, I had a man come to me with 10 years of sobriety. He was still in his late 20s, I guess. So he'd gotten sober very early. He had 10 years of sobriety. He had had 10 sponsors. They had all fired him. And I began working with him, and I could, I could see why. I'm a very difficult person and also not very consistent a severe case of ADD, quite frankly. And um, he wouldn't have anything to do with therapy or addressing his ADD because we did have those conversations. And, and But he did want to work the steps. So I, I worked the steps with him. It took him five years to do his fourth step. I don't recommend that. It took him another four years to finish his ninth step. I don't recommend that, but at, at, at the beginning, he had, when he came to me with 10 years of sobriety, having had 10 sponsors, he was being fired from his third job as a hotel bellhop, fired 10 years sober from his third job as a bellhop of a hotel, all right? I mean, I'm trying to portray something that's kind of like a very hopeless case. I said to him, well, what's your desire? What would you like to do? What's your inclination in terms of your gift as a vocation, as a career? He says, I want to be a commercial airline pilot. I bit my tongue. Well, because how do you respond to something like that when, of course, he's got, there's no predictability of his success in that area. I said, well, let's see what happens. After he finished his ninth step, you know what his job began to be and currently is today? Yes, he's a commercial airline pilot. And at the end of his ninth step, 10 years of doing the step work, he said, thank you for not throwing me away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, it wasn't my timetable. Now, obviously, that's a very loaded story to support my position. <laughs> but it is my story. It is my experience. Yeah. And so everybody needs to make up their own mind. Uh, I don't work any harder than they do. I don't change, chase them. I might call them. 
I allow them to call me and to report in as to the work they do. I will not work any harder than they do. I will meet them where they are. And I will try to help them to get to where I, I know they can get by finishing the step work. Great, great question, actually. Does that help? A lot. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're, you're so welcome. It, it's an it's a, it's a art form. It's not a science. Not a science at all. Um, I, I, as many of you know, I changed, I dropped the word service. I used to use that as the 12th step code. I dropped it because it's too fancy. In my meditation, the little voice in me said, use the word help, Herb, because it's got earth in it, it's got dirt in it. It's simple. The only question is, how can I help? Yeah. So I look through that lens. How can I help? And, and, and in a very practical way, common sense way. Now, if you have any real questions about that discernment, of course, then you have a sponsor or you have a fellowship in which you have those discussions with credible people. Yeah. I've been working with uh, a, a few new sponsees lately, and um, and, and in in, a, in the FA program, and I, I find that I'm up against. I've been trying to orient it toward toward doing step work because I really think that that is, for me, that is the, um, the the solution, and that's the only solution. I'm up against. Um, a tradition in FA that step work is done uh, only in A walls, um, right. and um, there's a de-emphasis on step work. Uh, so, uh, so I'm, I'm I'm getting a little bit of pushback, but also only a little um, bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I, I, I just, you know, people are doing a walls, and then they're, they're thinking that they're doing um, the steps. And I, I know you said that you don't have any problem with a walls, nor do I, um, but they aren't really working the steps. Uh, uh, well, well, be careful with that one. Um, you know, okay. I think they are working the steps. I mean, they're not doing it deeply by my standards or your experience right. for sure. But as I've been very clear, I think the AWOLs are very, very, very important introduction to the step process because people right. get a sense of the roadmap. And if they do an AWOL once or twice or three times, they're getting a sense of the, of the roadmap, of the terrain, of the culture, of the whole scope of the... But if, in fact, they really want to change... <laughs> then they need to do something a little deeper than the A walls because the A walls are about that deep, and the uh, step work that is available right. is probably that deep. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to say to them, just do this, and if you if you can stay with it uh, until you get God's grace, <laughs> you'll. You'll be absent. There, there. It's. It, I, I just have that conflict of you're. You're on the one hand, you're telling them eat three weighed measured foods uh, meals a day. Yeah. Uh, use your use your willpower, and on the other hand, you're talking to them about their powerlessness, how they can't do that. Yeah, right. So I, I don't know. Um, but what what uh, is, what is the heart of the question here? How, how do you deal with that? How do you deal patiently, with that? Patiently. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you believe that you're, they really are powerless? That they don't have the choice with regard to their abstinence? I do. Okay. It's you really, wait, it's wait, 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 wait. Do you really believe that at the end and the, of the ninth step, when they have finished the ninth step, that they enter the world of the spirit and are placed in a position of neutrality? Yes. So, so then the answer to the question is, have them do steps one through nine and finish nine, 
while they put up with, and you put up with, their continuing breaking of their abstinence. I guess so. Well, what's the alternative? <laughs> yeah. No, wait, wait. What else what's the alternative? There? there is no alternative. There is. That I know. That is correct. That is correct. I don't have, if I had a solution, I would sell it. Uh, well, but you do. <laughs> but you do have a solution. You no, have that's an answer. You have an answer, uh, powerless. Yes. You have an answer that power, effective power, is after you finish the ninth step. Now, in between, there's a whole bunch of suffering. How soon do you want to be free? Mm. Mm. But that's why it may be important not to do a deep dive in the step process uh, once they've sort of got the outline of the steps through the AWOL to take them through something that's less rigorous than an, a weekly one-year workshop, uh, but a lot more rigorous than the AWOL. And some play, you know, tailor a program to meet their needs so that they get through step nine. They don't have to That's do wonderful. this meticulous deep dive. Get them, are, are you powerless? And have them really understand a little bit and have an experience with step one. Do you believe in God? Uh, or, or you do or you don't or you may be? Okay, well, then are you willing? Yeah, pray the third step. Notice I just took about five minutes to take them through steps one, two, and three. And then uh, have them do some type of uh, fourth step. It may not be the third and fourth column. My, that's a beating. But it might be some form of autobiography in which they get very clear as to their own personal history. And they share mm -hmm. that. And then they do some six and seven. And they, they figure out a little bit of the people they harmed if they're that conscious and willing to start making amends and you get them in and through that. And maybe in three to six months, they finish the steps for the first time, knowing that they will do it again a little deeper later. Hmm. Thank you. I, I, I actually had never, I hadn't thought of that. I mean, yeah, I was well, starting to, I'm start, that starting to do it, yeah. I'm having that very discussion with some people in FA that want me to actually have a formal program that I just described. And that is uh, something that you might consider half measures. <laughs> you know, it's something well, that rather than taking a year to do it, do it in anywhere from four or five or six months. So I'm, I'm currently in discernment about doing something like that. Well, I think it's a, a fabulous idea. FA needs it, and uh, yeah. at least in terms of my own work with with FA people, uh, yeah. I think you've, you've given me some wonderful uh, yeah. idea. I was right. I was starting to do that because of the of the pushback I'm getting anyway. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And, have them, and, uh, mm -hmm. yep, yeah. Do have them do uh, step work light. <laughs> right. And but but at least at least get them get them going in it yeah well if they if they can dive a little deeper into the fourth step is probably the key to helping them mm -hmm. have a new experience and with the right. deep dive that you've done in the fourth step you can help them at least go up to their waist rather than to their ankles <laughs> uh, thank you herb yes i can thank yeah. you yeah. yeah. Well, but see, that's our challenge, isn't it? To be creative. Do we right. really want to help somebody? Okay, then figure yeah. out what will help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, my experience has not been that after I did the ninth step, I felt the freedom from food. Um, I got abstinent at the beginning from sugar. I, and that's my experience, but I believe from learning from you that taking people through the steps, regardless of what they're doing in terms of breaking abstinence, relapsing, you've helped me tremendously with that. I love that because that is helping. And I do know that I don't know anybody's timetable. I don't know. 
I got absent from sugar, but I still had, and with food, this is often the case. You still have some struggles with certain foods, with this, with that. Anyways, she believes in the program. She's 30 some years sober, but she's been telling me over the last six months at times that she's eating a little more comfort food. And, and I've been there, I know. And then she said she feels her one step, one foot out of the program a little, not quite as devoted, this and that. I, I understand that. Okay, the question. So then I said, why don't you weigh yourself? Um, and she finally weighed herself and she has put on 30 pounds this year. And, and her abstinence is three meals a day and two snacks. I'm also in how. And I think you've answered this by saying, I mean, I'm her sponsor. So her abstinence is my business. It's a little. No, her absence, her abstinence is not your business. It's not. No, because she's powerless. Business. She's it's powerless. her business. Right. Okay. So I said, why don't you try a how meeting? Just check it out. Cause I'm in both. Yeah, and yeah. she did. She was willing. And I know I can't, I don't really believe in telling somebody they broke their abstinence. I ask them what their abstinence is. And I say, if you're doing that, there's an issue in OA of fat serenity and it's not my business. And I just don't want, I don't think I'm enabling her. I'm there for her. I'm there for the writing and the reading, but I, um, she's not jumping into how, which I understand I'm in how, and I think they're nuts half the time. So um, but somehow it works. So I just, am, so what's your question? I guess I'm wondering if there's anything more I could be doing for who, for her to help her. W what is your role with her? I'm her sponsor. All right. And uh, sponsor in what program? In OA. And she's in OA. All right. So uh, I would assume that you have a sponsor. Yes. And have you discussed with your sponsor what the role of a sponsor is? Not lately, no. It might be a refresher for you to- Yeah, good idea. Up, you know, what, what is my role as a sponsor? My, I'm not the police. No. no. I, I'm not the criteria. And no. I'm not sure that I should ever ask the question about your weight and or your abstinence. Is that really your business or is it her business? Well, I think I've made my, I go from my experience much yeah. of the time with sponsors in the past. Yeah. And I have found a reality check. It doesn't mean I'm not going to tell her how often she should weigh, but I know it does help to get, to get a reality check on that sometimes. Yeah, that might be a conversation where you would ask her is, is this what she would appreciate from me as your sponsor? Or do you, do you want to check in in terms of uh, a, a sounding board and or a reality check? Is that something that's important to you? I do not want to invade your private life, your, your journey, your relationship with food and your relationship with God is your business. How can I help you? Yeah. 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 That's good. Well, I think it's really important for the sponsor to know their role and for the sponsee to know their role. And it's a great discussion to have. What are your expectations? These are my expectations. Is there a match? I feel like my role is to be there, to listen, to listen when she reads me her writings, whether it's specific step work or whether it's writing Dear God, to thank her for reading it, to say the serenity prayer together, to work on the step if there's a particular issue going on. Um, and I know I don't have any power over the results at all. And um, I guess I've never sponsored anybody 
who says they're abstinent and they're gaining, I've gained weight in abstinence, not in how, but when I was just in regular OA. I'm just wrestling with, yeah, I'm going to talk to some more people in OA. Yeah. Well, that, well, I mean, that, that, yeah, you know, if you talk to a bunch of ignorant people, you're going to get I, a bunch of ignorant I, thoughts. So, I was thinking one person. Yeah. yeah. No, that, no, that's true. <laughs> I, I, know that. I, I actually like the phrase that you used a reality check. I love that phrase because I know that I wasn't in reality. My sponsor asked me, he never talked of all of this conversation or vocabulary, but what he did say to me, I want you to tell me what you're thinking, feeling, or doing. Right. And I was, I used him as a sounding board and he would reflect back to me, not in judgment, right. but to make sure I wasn't bullshitting myself. Right. Because I'm the last one to figure it out. Well, and this person is very intelligent, of course, and very, you know, steeped in the 12 steps, having been an AA and work, works the AA program. And, and yet she's, you know, 270 pounds. Um, but is that a problem for her? Yes, it is. Oh, it is. Oh, then oh, no, it that, definitely is. How can I help you navigate re a resolution to this problem of your weight? Right. How can I help you? What do you want from me? Here's, here's my experience. Here's what I'd like to do. I mean, is this, is this our covenant together? Yeah, I think it is. I, I don't, I don't doubt it, uh, but I can re-ask it. But, I, but I, make it, make it very visible. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Cause that's so loving, you know, it, yeah. and that's it right there. That's it. How can I help? Loving it's, kindness. These are the two lenses I try to look through. Loving kindness. <laughs> because it's so respectful. There's so much, there's so much junky stuff that goes in sponsorship, I find in food programs. I've seen it, you know. Well, in all sponsorship, it's a people are well-meaning, but they take on the role of a monitor, parent, disciplinarian, prison guard. It's kind of like, it's just hu it's human nature, but it's just not helpful. No, thank you. I like that. It, 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 the, broadened, the broadened perspective, and it's very heart opening. That's, thank you. Yes, that's it right there. All right. Thanks, Herb. Oh boy, my head's spinning her from this conversation because it's like blowing up all preconceived notions about what I'm supposed to do and not do. And I, I'm willing to offer my, That's my compliment. <laughs> <laughs> that, yes. I'm willing to offer my own experience to all of you. It might be helpful, it might not. But I've been in program almost 18 years. And in the first nine, I lied about my abstinence, right, to my sponsor. Now, I didn't go out and binge, and I didn't gain weight, a lot of weight. I would do licks, bites, taste. I was out of my food plan on a daily basis, but not enough to make me blow up in terms of my weight gain. And I lied because I didn't, I was so ashamed that I was doing what I was doing. I didn't want my sponsor to know it. So, during that nine years, I did two big book studies. I worked my tail off on the steps. I just wasn't willing to give up that piece of control until nine years in. And I ended up, and I'm telling you guys this because I'm a good example of what happens if, some, if my sponsor had kicked me to the curb. I'm not sure what would have happened. Now, I did lie to her. If I had told her the truth, and she kept going, that would be even better, right? But as it turned out, um, since that time, I had picked up once or twice and I told her and she didn't get rid of me because she knew I was a hard worker. But what I'm saying is that I took a long time to get my powerlessness. It, I, you know, and I did a lot of fourth steps and all that. So I just want to say, I don't, think there's a black and white 
answer there to is. this. That is correct, yeah. And um, I don't even know. I have great sponsees are doing great work. I don't know if they're abstinent. They say they are. I have no earthly idea. Um, I don't ask the question. I, 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 unless it's obvious that somebody's been drinking that day, all right, then I'll, I, I might ask, have you had a drink today? If they have had a drink today, I won't work with them. But if they answer no, I will work with them, even if it's a lie, unless, right. it's, unless it's patently obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> not so obvious if they've been overeating. It, exactly. it's, a, it, it's a little different. But anyway, I just wanted to say that, that for me, it's gray. It's all gray. And it's like, do what you're, you know, pray on it. Do what I'm trying to say what my heart I, tells I me. I don't to. have to suffer other people's misbehavior. Yeah. They do. So there's where we need to be very clear about who we are and who they are. Now, somebody mentioned earlier about codependency. That's where I begin to live their lives. I'm attached in an unhealthy way to their feelings and their sufferings. All right. That's unhealthy. All right. So that means that I probably need to do some work in in my area of codependence. Well, one of the things is I, I'm getting sponsees coming to me who said I've relapsed a number of times and I need to go deeper. So I go, great, let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they may pick up again, they may not. And, you know, when they don't call me or don't do the assignments, I've dedicated a slot of time for them. Mm -hmm. And at some point I have to say, wait a minute, there may be somebody out there that needs that slot. And is, so I might make that my, my point where I say, I, I can't keep it open for you, you there know, you if, That's right. if you're not going to do the work. That's so right. I just have a couple of quick questions. How are people getting step guides? I, I had one and she dropped off and I, should I be coming to your class, Herb? Or no, I people... think that's. I mean, you do what you want. Uh, certainly, in meetings of your own fellowship, you listen to whether people have done the work that would quote qualify by your standards as to helping you with the steps. I have a list of st of people who have volunteered. They uh, they they uh, self vet. I don't I don't do an an interview, nor do are there any tests or certifications. If a person says that they're a capable step guide there, and they want to be on the list, they go on the list. So I yeah, can, I am on the list, yeah. but I just it's okay. I haven't gotten any requests. So. Well, it's you know it's kind of difficult. I there are some people who are quite assertive using the list and they will begin calling people either in their geography or in their fellowship or, or in some way they, and they, they discover, they uncover some people that will help them. Uh, but I mean, that's, that takes some work and it, and it's kind of like walking in the blind because you really don't know the people and it's just the best we can do right now. Yeah. Okay. So lastly, I had a sponsee who said, and I mentioned this the last meeting we had, took, take, took your year-long step study three times and has continued to relapse since then. And she came to me and she was absent for three weeks and then she picked up again. And I, like, I don't know what to do. Mm. I, I, why, why do you need to do anything? Just keep, Having to work the steps. No, no, no. The, the, the healthy question is, what does she need to do? You I don't have need to no do idea. Well, well, I have no idea. Well, there's where you might need some help, is figuring out what does she need to do. She's not convinced of her powerlessness. Oh, I don't she know keeps, that. Do you know that? Well, she keeps picking up. Oh, well, wait. <laughs> that means she's powerless. It has nothing to do with conviction. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Has she finished her ninth step? Uh, yes. Well, in your program. 
in well, one wait, of the wait, three. Wait, 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 wait. When you say in my program, first she of didn't all, really take it. If she was present, but she, I don't think she got from it what. Well, wait, wait. What does it mean when I say, did she finish her ninth step? To me, has yes. she completed all her amends? Yes, yes, yeah, but, but that's not what you answered. You answered, oh, she, she did your workshop and completed the meetings that you had on the ninth step. That's not an answer okay. to, did she finish her ninth step? Yes, she did. She did finish her ninth step. We finished up a couple people. All right, all right. Does she have a daily practice of meditation? So she says. Yes. Right. Does she help other people? In program outreach calls so far, because she hadn't finished with me all 12 steps, she didn't feel like she could sponsor. Well, okay. But you're saying she does help other people with the outreach calls and whatever yes. limited definitions and or whatever definitions there are. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it is possible that she may never be abstinent. It is possible, yes. Okay, and so you just live with that and do the best you can, looking for and hoping for some resolution. Okay. Yeah, That's... I worked with a guy who went through the steps that took him 10 years, a different person, went, took him 10 years to go through the steps, and during that 10 years, he was drinking the entire time. Then once he got sober, I mean, that was wonderful. And he stayed sober. And yet it, it broke out into uh, addiction for food. And he gained 150 pounds and died of a heart attack. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, you know, yep. this is like, okay, we're, we're dealing with a killer disease. And if it doesn't manifest in one way, it'll manifest in a different way if you're not in a holistic uh, approach to your human nature and your relationship with power. Yeah. Thank you, Herb. Well, you know, there's there's no facile, easy answer to this. It's not black and white. It's not a science. It's a it's an art form, and you kind of like have to navigate it and stay flexible and meet them where they are and just try to help. Yeah. Okay. And not take responsibility for their lives or their feelings, which are those are those, the hard things to do for some people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful conversation. Thank you. And Herb, I've got a question for you. Um, and it is, I have a sponsee and I was also a step, she was in a step guide group. Uh, she went through your the one year um, 12 step process with you last year. And, um, and we've been in a, um, the, the step guide group decided that we'd keep going on the emotional sobriety oh, um, book mm -hmm. and have been meeting um, every two weeks, wow. taking a chapter every two weeks mm -hmm. on that. Uh, this person, um, I mean, she lost over 100 pounds and stuff in FA, and, but she has decided to drop out of program just recently, yeah. and um, she's having some struggles with the food, and uh, she want, she's going to try something else, and she's also dropped out of the emotional sobriety, sure. and I'm wondering, as a sponsor, I really like this person, and, but as a sponsor, can I, would it be helpful to me and to her, but would it be helpful, I'm thinking more of myself, because I guess she doesn't need it, of saying, was there something that I, some help that I didn't give you or as a sponsor or something, I want to learn from this. And was there some, was there's some way I'm open to hearing. Was there some way Wonderful. that yeah. I didn't well, come through in a way you needed? The answer is 
I think it's a worthwhile conversation. Probably wouldn't be helpful to come at it strictly from that angle, though, because I could see her protecting you by not blaming you and not telling you the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think you need to figure out a positive way of approaching her asking more questions than taking any responsibility. And the questions would be, uh, what did you find helpful? What did you not find helpful? Um, uh, what do you see as um, the, the missing part or, or so, some way of framing the word so that she's gonna start telling you what her perceptions are, what her feelings are, what her behavior is, what her experience is to try to identify uh, some area you, which you can uh, ask questions about because you have an experience. You know that doing a complete fourth step with no secrets is the key. You know, finishing the ninth step creatively, either directly or indirectly, but finishing is a key to the neutrality. You know that a daily practice of step 10 keeps the channel clear. You know that a daily practice of step 11 gives you a connection to power. You know that practicing principles in the 12th step keeps you in alignment and helping other people and also receiving help as a sponsor are all of the key ingredients. So there's a lot of moving parts. Ask questions about these various things to at the very least, try to help her get some consciousness of the possible missing piece for herself. Or perhaps in that conversation, you will hear something that you may want to change in terms of your approach or uh, not having or having some type of a, uh, 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 an instruction or a behavior. And so there's, I mean, it's a, I think it's a wonderful uh, question to have a conversation about and set it up so that she will be able to tell you the truth to the extent that she wants to reveal the truth. Mm -hmm. Did all Thank that you. make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's pretty straightforward, so I'm not sure she'd protect me, but I don't know. Um, um, but well, I, I know think a person, even if they felt that <clears throat> you were not the right fit for her, they're not going to, I don't believe at this point in the, if I'm seeing the relationship correctly, that they're going to place you in a position of being blamed for their relapse. Yeah. yeah. No, I think she's, she's got 15 years or so in, in no. AA no. and, yeah. you know. Yeah, um, but it just—I I have to admit it, it. It made me so sad, sure. especially. I thought, you know, find a new program. I'm not, you know, FA works for me, but right. it right. certainly isn't the end all be all. And she's well, going to try Noom or something, and but because she wants something that's science based. Okay. And, oh, I see. Um, I see. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And um, but she also is just having trouble with the food, yeah. but um. I was really kind of disappointed that she's not going to do the emotional sobriety. Yeah, work. right, right. But, you know, yeah, um, I can't well, lead a horse to water. You can't make him drink. No, but you're trying to understand what she's seeing, how she's interpreting what she's seeing what her motives are, what, what she is seeing as something <clears throat> that's missing or that something's attracting her. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And some people have to go away for a while and find that it doesn't work. I lose quite a few people to church uh, because they think that, well, that's a relationship with God. I'll just go there. And then eventually they, the, the the connection to the fellowship withers and then of course their own life withers and then they say oh I need to go back to the fellowship 
there's no conflict between church and fellowship, but if you put the church as a priority over fellowship, normally you lose. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Again, really, really solid questions because this, there are many people's experience. Thank you. I'm here with a general question. And in Boston, we don't have a lot of step um, sponsors. We have sponsors in my program of AA. And one of the thoughts I had was whether or not it, anybody has or would it be helpful to team up with somebody who is a sponsor and wants to join with somebody who is a step sponsor to be able to get the ball rolling. There are some, uh, okay. What I'm saying is to be a step sponsor in my area, most people don't know what that is. Okay. And because of that, um, I might get requests to be a general sponsor. Yes. But what I'd like to do is to increase um, the, 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 the information and knowledge of what a step sponsor is. Yes. And could it possibly be working with a sponsor in AA who has sponsees and wants them to go through the steps? Uh, yeah, yes, now I understand. And yes, yeah, sure, of course. I mean, uh, many sponsors send their sponsees to my workshop. Now, I don't ask the question, but I, it, it disappoints me that sponsors are lazy, all right? They need to learn how to do and or do the work. But don't send them to Herb's workshop because you don't want to be bothered with it or you don't feel adequate to do it. Um, so uh, I, don't, I don't make that a headline uh, issue, but it's a concern of mine. And um, I'm constantly you know, trying to navigate making sure that I'm not enabling sponsors to be irresponsible, actually. All right. Thank you, Harper. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll say I just finished your year-long workshop back in December. I'm signed up for the new one. And it's, it's been life-changing, and I'm, I haven't finished all the steps yet. I'm still in the process. Um, I have a sponsor in my fellowship who's been through your process three times. Um, so we, we are both very strong believers in you. And um, I've been in 12-step fellowship since 1990, and in that time, I've, I've worked the steps several times using various methods. And when I sponsor... I always do it like the, my most recent way I've done the steps because that's my most current experience. So um, my my inclination now when I and I'll say I have two sponsees right now who are both in your in your current workshop that started in July. So and the way it works, they they come to me and we we talk about what they're learning and they share their writing with me. And I share my experience with it, and that's how it works. So my inclination is if anybody asks me to sponsor them to say, well, oh, that's my, my watch, um, is to say, well, if, if you want me to sponsor you, you're going to need to listen to these workshops on YouTube because that's how I learned about it. And then I, what I found very interesting is what you just said is that you consider it irresponsible for a sponsor to send a sponsee to your year-long workshop. So, yet I, I wouldn't know how to communicate it to the to the depth and the level that you do. So, I guess that was my question: is is that how 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 do you advise people to sponsor who want to use your methodology in the way they sponsor? Well, yeah, no, first of all, I don't have a black and white about that. You know that. In fact, I would never discourage somebody from coming to my workshop. I just am concerned about enabling sponsors to not learn how to do it or to not do it themselves, because I think that's a 
a primary function of sponsorship. But what you just said, if I heard it correctly, is that you, when you're sponsoring somebody and you want to take them through the steps, that you include the looking at and uh, hearing my videos as part of the resource. I think that's exactly the purpose of the YouTube recordings is to assist sponsors in unpacking the big book. People oh, who have themselves gone through the big book, perhaps in the workshop, that they then ask somebody else to use the big book and then use the YouTube unpacking, and then we'll talk about the step work. I think that's the ideal, personally. That's why I, I did it, and that's why it's recorded, and that's why it's on YouTube, so that it's a resource like the big book is a resource. My recordings are a resource to supplement the work on the big book. Yeah, I, I, that's for me, that's the ideal. Okay, great. Now, because I, I wouldn't know how else to do it. I mean, if, if someone wants what I have, then you do what I do. And this is what I did. Now, I, I won't necessarily require them to go to the, to the, to the discussions because that time may or may not work for them. I would encourage them to. Yeah, yeah. But they, at the very least, they have to listen to the videos because I, I can't impart it the way you did having been through it one time. I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. <laughs> no, well, it's not about being smart. It's not about being smart or informed. It's about being experienced. And, well, right, exactly. and, and my, my anticipation would be that you'll do that at some point, you, because of your taking the people through with the supplement of the YouTube, you will be able to replace the YouTube because you will have a sense of and a competency with the communication of your interpretation and experience with the big book. So I don't, I, I see this as, as, you know, I've been doing it for 25 years. So talk to me again in 20 years. Right. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, you. yeah your, 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 your spirit from my standpoint is the best part of this conversation. You're you're doing just fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you so much. All right. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Good. Wonderful. Yeah. It's a very different approach than I've ever used before. And in fact, I'll be doing exactly what we just talked about. I'll be telling people, here's the assignment from the big book. Here's the assignment from the YouTube. I'm not going to do any teaching other than what you hear on the YouTube. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be doing exactly what you just said. All right, cool. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be a step guide once I finish step nine, but I, I don't really feel qualified to do that. I feel qualified to sponsor people in my own fellowship, but a step guide, that's a whole nother ball of wax as far as I can tell. So. Um, yes, and yes, and we could have that discussion, but I'm going to say yes, 100%. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks, sir. To be a step guide or to be effective, I'm just finding on a personal basis still a bit of discomfort to just be a step guide. And it comes from doing some work and doing it incrementally and, and uh, generating some experience that generates some self-confidence. Okay, well... I guess that's where to start. In yeah, we have to start someplace and it will be like a, 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 a one-year-old attempting to walk. They're doing it for the first time and they fall down a lot, but they get back up. And the more they get up, the stronger they get, the more balanced they get from their experience. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you. All right. I have um, a sponsee that has continually slipped and she goes for a while and she's back on. Like we went through the big book together, but I have not sponsored her as a step guide. Would it be wise for me to start with her asking her what her goals are and having them write her goals out for me and then possibly bringing her around to 
working, becoming a step guide for her. Um, she's real resistant. And, and she's, she's real very, resistant to what? She's, she's real resistant to um, any direction. I mean, she's. What is she asking from you? What is the relationship? I am her. I am her sponsor, and I have been her sponsor for over a year. She has done a great job in losing weight, but she goes on binges, and I'm still there behind her 100. percent And it's like I told her just recently, because she's just recently come back again to the program. Um, I just told her, you know, you will recovery comes as we drop our old habits, recovery can become a habit also. Um, you know, and I'm there behind her, but I was just wondering whether or not asking her to set her goals so I know where she is with what she wants to do and having her write them out. Well, sure, that's a good thing to have her get clear as to what her goals are for herself. Does... does have you asked her what she wants from you? No, but that's a good beginning. Yeah, it would be actually. And then you share with her what it means for her to be sponsored by you. You're the sponsor. You get to make the rules. Okay. Yeah. What so you? if part of what your want for people as a sponsor is that they go through the steps with you, then, right. then you make that clear to her. Is that something that you want to do? And if you don't want to do that, you might need to find a different person. Okay. Thank you. You've given me the words that I need. Yeah. Yeah. But gentle, we're not talking about oh, yeah. confrontation yeah. or yeah. argument or being right. We're how can I be helpful? And this is exactly. part of what helped me is I did the steps. And I mean, I'm assuming that's true for you, that you did steps and that you've had some changes that were not available to you in any other way. Right. I've tried to, I've tried to guide her to you and it, that hasn't worked. So I, I feel that working the steps together is our next option. Um, thank and, you. you get and, and as the prior uh person indicated she uses the youtube or the podcasts as a supplement rather than having her go to a weekly meeting with herb uh, yeah. you, you don't need that you, you actually really don't need that what you right. might find helpful is like we would use the 12 and 12 as a supplement to the big book we use the there's a there's two different resources in the uh, recordings one is the YouTube that was done this, uh, last year, um, which has the PowerPoint. And the other is the one that was done the year before, which is an audio recording only. It's the 2020 podcast. So one or the other uh, of those would be a wonderful complementary supplement yeah. to the big book and to, and you would both learn from it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No, so that's right on the money. Thank you. Um, I, I've been in uh, OA for a long time, over is Anonymous, and then Al Anon for quite a while. And I've gone through the steps in different ways and been a sponsor. But the thing is, I, I, the problem that I have is, is going through the fourth step with the column message. I can't really get the last column, although I've done four steps myself, narrative, and that's how any sponsor would do it. But do you suggest doing something specific on um, four step? Because I really, I really want to do that. Okay, so I don't really know what your question is. You have- Yeah, well, done, what, I guess have... the, question, the question is, do you have anything specific for that? Like in the a specific steps? I know that you do the 12 steps over a year, or is that what you would recommend? All right, are you, I want your attention. Yeah. Your attention, all right. The uh, YouTube is set up so that the recordings are for each component of the step. So there's YouTube recordings on column three, 
there are YouTube recordings on column four. So if you wanted to do a laser focused study and experience with column three and or column four, you could do that by accessing those YouTubes and following the direction. At the same time, I feel so strongly about column three and column four that on a quarterly basis, I will be doing a three to four hour workshop uh, this year uh, so there'll be four opportunities for people to have some experience on a Saturday uh, to do column three and column four, uh, four different times, uh, one, one a quarter this year, because I think it's where the most transformation begins. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, thank you. I'll do, I'll look at the YouTube and I'll look for those Saturday. Well, at the same, yeah. And, and at the same time, my book, my second book, which is called 12 Steps to Spiritual Awakening, in chapter four, about step four, there is a written commentary. If some people do better with things in writing than they do in things on, on listening. So that would also be a resource for you and or anybody who wants to do a laser focus column three. It's all laid out in column four, it's all laid out. Okay. And so, yeah, that's the whole point of the work that I do is to create a legacy of resources for people to be able to access without me. Well, you, you certainly accomplished it so far. I'm, I'm well <laughs> on the way to having a nice full package of robust resources, then that really is the point. By the end of this year, we will certainly uh have uh, made a lot of progress yeah so thanks so much for thank that. you thank you i appreciate it so i started sponsoring this uh young woman um well young to me she's 40 and um and um so uh she wants to get sober and abstinent at the same time sure why not why not right that's <laughs> a lot gnarlier than I obviously I you know approached but um but uh she's you know sort of in dire straits with the um food thing and then um less so in a sense with alcoholism and every time she talks about alcohol it's always like a it's always like a year-end goal in mind and uh like next year I want to be sober during Christmas and blah, 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 blah. And I keep, and I keep bringing her back to one day at a time. Right. <laughs> and, um, cause it's, she's like this, uh, very goal oriented gal, right. Uh, with her career. And as, as long as the goal <laughs> tomorrow, I'm sorry, as long as the goals are tomorrow. Yeah. It's, uh, no, I, I like it's, your approach. Uh, the goal should be for today. Just to fucking today, right? Yes. Because I can't go outside of today. No. I mean, I could think to myself, like, you know, I'm really alcohol neutral, blah, 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 blah. There's so like, is she, is, she actually, is she actually in a 12 step program? Yeah, she goes to a lot of me because she's all very like, she, it's like she wants to get an A in OA and AA in a way. Right. So right? she goes to both uh, physical meetings and Zoom meetings? Yes. All right. All right. So what does she want from you? She wants to work the steps well, and take her uh, through the steps. Mm -hmm. But see, it comes to that sort of like, she's very conscious of her powerlessness over the food stuff. Yeah. But her, her, she kind of, it's almost like her, her desire to not drink is adjacent right. to, and yeah. not in the same kind of depth of, uh, All right. powerlessness. But so, so, so does she want to quit drinking? Yes. You, she, you sure that she wants to quit drinking? That's what she says. But it's, okay. it, 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 as an, it's adjacent to... No, the, it's fine. It's, it, her priorities are just whatever they are. And so uh, take her through the steps. All right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Yeah, because if in fact she's not abstinent in food or not sober in alcohol, take her through the steps on a on a, a day that she is fairly clear enough to do some work and 
have some intelligent conversation and move forward. And what you really want to do is get her through one, two, and three pretty quickly, actually. I mean, really quickly. Don't spend a lot of time for her to understand or even have an experience, but get her okay. into that fourth step. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then um, this being her first time working steps, um, should I just give her the a general direction? Okay. All you need to do now is write a list of resentments. Don't do anything else yet. And then from there, and then work from there. Or do you think presenting her with your uh, your, mm, you know, your uh, worksheets would be helpful, or is that too much? Like that would have been too I much. Don't, I don't think the worksheets in the beginning. I think it might be good for her uh, get her through steps one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't mean rush, but but you figure out what she what works for her to have a reasonable understanding and an experience, but don't delay it waiting for anything special. <laughs> And I think I was, you know, I was waiting for that, that profound doors of hell clanging shut moment for her around right. alcohol. It right. is there for her for food, but not for alcohol. But fuck it, just push. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because the two are tied together, of course, because alcohol um, is a uh, uh, has a bunch of sugar in it. So that'll connect to food. But be that, you yeah, don't spend a lot of time on it. Because it's not her priority. It, it, it may be once you get some more consciousness. But where I was going with this fourth step is you might have her do an autobiography of her okay. relationship with alcohol. Great. And her autobiography of her relationship with food. Two different projects. Both of them very bullet point. Not, not, not full sentences and not even complete phrases but just bullet points. What did I do? How did I act? What was the result of this? Boom, 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 boom. Um, uh, for, her, for her whole life and, and have her do one at a time, maybe the food first, because that's her sort of priority. And then the alcohol second, two different projects and have them then when she finishes the one on food, have her read it to you. And when she finishes the one on alcohol, have her read it to you. Then take her into the resentment and, and be careful about the forms because that can be quite intimidating. Oh my God, yeah. Like I would have fallen apart had I seen those yeah, when I first, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you might figure out a distilled way to shorten that up in some way without, I mean, maybe the just the resentment itself and the self-esteem and the pride, those two kind of things, uh, using some simple language to, and then get her into that fourth column, which is actually pretty simple language anyway. But don't use the forms, just use the five, the first five questions. Right on. Thank yeah. you, Herb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, give us feedback on how you handle this because it's 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 in the air with me. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I want to create a fast way, faster way of going through the steps for people who are brand new to it, who just need this panoramic view and the beginnings of some experience. Right. All right. Yeah, that makes total sense because that's that's what I had yeah. when I first got sober. Like I didn't, I was so clueless, but you know, that's another thing. But it was just a general thing where I could say, yeah, I did a fourth and fifth step. And then I could, you know what I mean? And move forward and whatever. I didn't get in depth. For exactly seven. my experience too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Right on. Thanks. Thanks everybody. This is the goal here transformation the goal of awakening that's what the, it's a synonym for and this is that process of turning from our self-centeredness to other centeredness we enter the world of the spirit that's our prayer lord make me a channel of your peace that where there is hatred i may bring love that where there is wrong i may bring the spirit of forgiveness that where there is discord, I may bring harmony. That where there is error, I may bring truth. That where there is doubt, I may bring faith. That where there is despair, I may bring hope. That where there are shadows, I may bring light. That where there is sadness, I may bring joy. 
Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds, it is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Amen. Amen.